Belgian pumpkin waffles two ways. First, pumpkin street waffles made with Belgian pearl sugar. And second, classic pumpkin waffles with cinnamon whipped cream and maple syrup. We'll start with 3 quarters cup of warm whole milk. Add one package of active dry yeast and stir well. Try using a small whisk to help dissolve the yeast. In a mixing bowl, add 16 ounces of all-purpose flour. I like to weigh the flour on a kitchen scale, but if you're measuring using cups, it's about three and three quarters cup. One tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice. And one teaspoon salt. Stir the dry ingredients together using a fork. And I'm using my favorite blending fork again, and I use this on almost every recipe. So I'll leave a link in the description, you can check it out. Add the milk and yeast mixture to the dry ingredients. And the melted butter, about one and a half sticks. Two large eggs. One teaspoon vanilla and I love Watkins baking vanilla. And one half cup pumpkin. You can use canned pumpkin, or if you can find a little sugar pumpkin at the grocery store, you could roast it in the oven and make your own pumpkin puree. But there's nothing wrong with using canned pumpkin. I like to mix the dough by hand for this recipe, but you could use a stand mixer if you want to. This makes a really sticky dough. Be sure to blend in all the dry ingredients. You can switch to a large spoon or spatula to scrape the sides of the bowl and finish the mixing process. Cover the dough and allow it to rise in a draft-free area for at least 30 minutes, but probably no longer than 45 minutes. Now it's time to add the Belgian pearl sugar. It looks like a lot, but keep in mind this is the only sugar added to the dough. Make sure to add the pearl sugar after the dough rises. If you add it before the dough rises, the sugar can dissolve, and we want it to hold its shape. The pearl sugar caramelizes as the waffles bake and make a nice brown crunch on the outside. Keep folding the dough, and you can press the little sugar bits in as you go. All of your extra effort and hard work will pay off in the end. These waffles are so good, you're gonna love them. They make a nice holiday breakfast or brunch, um, a special dessert, or a late night treat just because. Now for the fun part. I'm using my favorite Belgian waffle iron. I'll leave a link in the description box for the waffle iron, Belgian pearl sugar, and a few other things that I use today. Lightly brush the surface of your waffle iron with a little vegetable oil. 
You'll only need to do this once at the first of the baking process because the dough has quite a bit of butter in it already, so the waffles won't stick to the iron. I like to set the waffle iron between four and five. They bake about three minutes, but you might need to let it go a little longer because you want the waffles to be nice and brown. This recipe makes about eight large waffles. I like using a large scoop to transfer the dough to the waffle maker. The dough contains raw eggs, so using the scoop will keep your hands nice and clean. Now would be a good time to start a pot of coffee. One thing that makes these so good is the texture. They've got it all. They're crispy, chewy, and soft. Coming up next, version number two. The recipe is almost the same, except we'll add a fourth cup of brown sugar to the dough and leave out the pearl sugar. And now for the classic pumpkin waffles with cinnamon whipped cream and maple syrup. Sixteen ounces of all-purpose flour. And if you're not using a scale, that's about three and three quarters cup. One tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice. One teaspoon of salt. And one fourth cup of packed brown sugar added to the dry ingredients. One package of active dry yeast dissolved in three quarters cup of warm milk. One and a half sticks of unsalted melted butter. Two large eggs. One teaspoon vanilla. And one half cup pumpkin. Mix just like before. Cover your dough. Allow it to rise 30 to 45 minutes. Bake for about the same amount of time as before. Set your waffle iron between four and five, and they bake for around three minutes or so. You'll just need to check and make sure they're nice and brown. These taste really good with just butter and maple syrup, or you could take the next step and make cinnamon whipped cream. To a chilled mixing bowl, add one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. Beat until soft peaks form. This is my first time using the KitchenAid cordless hand mixer and I really love it. It has a nice low speed setting. It also looks heavy duty enough to handle buttercream and cookie dough, so I'm looking forward to trying it in another video. Here comes the secret ingredient. Add two tablespoons of instant white chocolate pudding mix. One half teaspoon vanilla and one fourth teaspoon cinnamon. Mix on low speed for a few seconds and then kick it up to high speed. Mix on high until nice and thick. Top with a big dollop of cinnamon whipped cream Sprinkle with a little extra cinnamon and drizzle with maple syrup. These didn't last very long and I had to make a second batch. If you should happen to have any leftover, they store well in a Ziploc bag or an airtight container. Just warm in the oven for a few minutes before serving. For both versions of this recipe, 
and for the cinnamon whipped cream, go to my website at doublestopbakeshop.com. I really hope you'll try making these, and if you do, let me know how they turn out in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.